Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, where the weather is finally starting to get a little bit better. If, like me, you're getting up to full volume, things are probably looking quite good at this point. I caution you to do nothing rash, just because your chances of suddenly increasing your fitness are relatively low, but your chances of hurting yourself and not being able to recover in time for the race are starting to get high. People are getting out on the trails. It's fantastic, and in fact, if Strava is to be believed, Riverhead Forest this weekend has been chock full of people getting out there and doing what they need to make sure they have a great day at Tarawira. It's four weeks to go. The topic of the day is shoe choice. Now I've seen some comments and questions on the Tarawira Facebook page about what kind of shoes you should run in. And to cut a very long story short, my personal view is you can run in pretty much any sensible road or trail shoe and you will be absolutely perfectly okay 90% of the time. The one possible exception is if it absolutely tips down with rain, as it did in 2018, 2014, and occasional other times. And we've seen with the recent weather here in Auckland, and to a lesser extent in Rotorua, it can happen. So, a couple of examples. Um, I will probably personally be running in these, which is a pair of Nike Zagamas. Um, I've tried them out, I'm very happy with them. It's just a trail shoe. Um, if they do have one minor challenge, much as the other shoes I'll be talking about in a second, their grip isn't amazing in very, very muddy conditions. Um, I've found it acceptable, good enough. So that's my first choice of shoe. Um, other example shoes, Nike Terra Kygers. Uh, I ran the 100K in 2020 in a pair of the old Terra Kyger 5s. I ran the Topor 100K um, in a pair of Terra Kyger 8s. That's a pair of eights. Again, the grip's not amazing, but for the vast amount of uh, the distance on Tarawira, absolutely fine. Uh, road shoes. I do most of my daily miles in a pair, a humble pair, no less, of Nike um, uh, Pegasus 39s. I've been using the Pegasus for years. Aside from the 37, which was an absolute disaster of a trainer, they've all been very, very good for me. Um, you would be absolutely A-OK -okay to run Tarawera in a pair of these the vast majority of the time. Certainly when I ran it in 2020, I could run it in these and there'd be absolutely no problem whatsoever. Um, so you don't necessarily need to run it in a pair of trail shoes. Now, the one exception to that is, like I say, is if the weather goes absolutely completely off the charts, like it did in 2018, where we had 24 to 36 hours of rain on the course before we even got started, and then it rained pretty consistently throughout most of the day. But that aside, you should be absolutely fine. Having talked a little bit about shoes, the other thing we're going to talk about today is trail navigation while you're actually competing in the race. Now, it's actually pretty straightforward, but then again, you are talking to someone here who's once got lost on a road 5k, so probably bear that in mind when listening to my instructions. So as you go along the trail, there are trail markers, and you'll see these about every 100 to 200 meters. And in fact, I think I see one just now. So the trail markers are just a simple marker made of clothes peg and some streamers. Um, sometimes in the US, they might be called dragons, I've heard them called. Um, and you can see them very, very clearly because they're made of fluorescent material. They've also got reflective in them, so they actually show up incredibly well at night. So you should see these every 100 to 200 meters. So if you go more than a couple hundred meters without seeing one of those, you know you've probably gone the wrong way. What I tended to find is I'd be getting to the point where I'd just be going, oh, have I seen one or not? And then I'd catch a glimmer of one in my head torch or I'd see a, um, a bit of the orange blaze uh, in just down the trail. So really, really marked tons of those all throughout the race. So very, very clear indeed. We see some more trail markers and we're coming up to a junction. Well, how do you know which way to go? Well, there are some clues. Firstly, there's a sign to the left telling us that we should probably go down that little side trail there. But also, where we shouldn't go, there'll be candy striped tape, red and white, saying no longer there. If we ignore that, a little bit further down the way, there'll be a sign saying, wrong way. Now if that's not a clue, I don't know what is. But even if you miss that and you keep going down the trail, you won't see any more of those trail markers. So you'll go one or two hundred meters and you'll start to get this little inkling in your head, well I haven't seen a marker for a couple hundred meters. And that's a pretty good clue that you've missed your turning. So in this case what we should do is we need to go back there and we need to head down to the correct trail. So we'll go back, see our arrow, and sure enough 
pretty quickly, we've come to another trail marker. So we know we're heading in the right direction, down the correct trail. And we're good. I hope your training is going really, really well. And you're kind of at that stage where you've hit your full volume and things are looking generally pretty good. One more hard week of work, and then you can have a nice three week taper into the race. And I'm really looking forward to see it, announcing of the elites. I don't know who's gonna be racing it. I know Bartholm Lucy Bartholomew is doing the miler, and I know that Hayden Hawks is doing the 100K, but beyond that, nothing has yet been announced. So I'm looking forward to hearing that. It's really not very long at all to go, guys. So I hope your training is going great. And I look forward to seeing each and every one of you getting out on the trails.